The next year or two in PC technology is absolutely exciting. While early next year isn't super interesting with the RTX 40 refresh, which, yeah, it's cool and all, but we kind of know what we're expecting, RDNA 4 as well as Battle Mage launch uh, at the midpoint of the year, which will give a great number of products for the mid-range, but we also have various CPU architectures which will release as well. But next year is shaping up to be very interesting not least of which because of blackwell in this video as you probably guessed from the title i want to share with you guys some very interesting stuff that i've been hearing concerning the rtx 50 series of geforce cards now it seems that nvidia are working on some very interesting plans not just for next year for geforce but also going into the year after and it seems that they may even be creating a MCM version of Blackwell for gaming. I can't really use any other word to describe this thing other than simply a monstrosity. And you'll see what I mean about that when I talk about the specifications and stuff later on. I also want to touch more on the architectural stuff because I've been hearing more about the caches, some of the SM changes, and a bunch of other stuff. This is acting as kind of like a sequel to a video I put out, well, I guess it would be a day or two ago at this point, while talking more about RDNA 4, a little bit about 5, as well as Battle Mage. So, there's a lot of stuff to get through in this video, and uh, we're going to be talking about that, plus more stuff, after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So I want to get the updates to the specifications that I put out a couple of days ago regarding GB202 out of the way because it's going to stand us in great stead for the rest of the video. Now GB202 will power the higher end RTX 50 GeForce cards. In my previous video, I stated that the memory configuration was 384 bit using GDDR7 but I had some conflicting information concerning the SM configuration. I'd been told 204, but I was leaning towards Coppertite 7's specifications, which were 192 SM. Coppertite uh, personally said that the specifications they'd been hearing was 512-bit GDDR7, and again, 192 SM's. Now, Coppertite 7 has now confirmed that my uh, memory configuration specifications were correct, but now I've heard a couple of other sources well basically they've given me some more context and specifications of gb202 and basically here's what they've told me 192 sm so copper type 7 specs were right 384 bit memory is being used gddr7 running at 36 gbps it's possible it could be a bit slower um, for the final configuration for example, the 5080 or whatever, but that's the specifications that are currently doing the rounds. 36 gigabytes of memory, they're using 24 GB RAM modules. Monolithic die on the TSMC 3N process, seems to be N3E. 96 megabytes of L2 cache. I still can't get this 100% confirmed though possibly incorrect, or it may simply change by the time the cards launch. I'll also mention that GB103, some of this information is quite old, um, so I'm relatively certain that this is not correct, so take this with a huge pinch of salt. I'm just going to add it in. I think it's possibly true that the memory configuration is, tr is correct, based upon what we heard for 202, but Again, take this with a huge pinch of salt. I'm just putting it here for completeness sake. 108 SM, 64 megabytes L2, 256 bit GDDR7, 24 GB modules, and 36 gigabytes of, um, sorry, running at 36 GBPS. Monolithic die, again, same manufacturing process as I just mentioned. Now, giving credit to Coppertite 7 regarding the cooler, it seems that 
it will indeed be leveraging the RTX 50 flagships, the same RTX 4090 Ti cooler we've seen leaks of. Um, Coppertite 7 mentioned this on Twitter, and again, I reached out to some sources, and one of them has told me that this is true. But now, this is where things get much, much weirder. I've only had a single source that's told me this information, but they've had a really good track record. Now, I'm sure most of you know that the rumors were that the data center cards launch next year and the gaming cards launched potentially the year after that, 2025. That seemed to be the general consensus. RDNA 5, meanwhile, launched late 2025. There wasn't an exact uh, month that I was given or anything like that, but general information that I'd been hearing was around six quarters after uh, RDNA 4, and that was seemed to be what most folks were talking about anyway. But now things become a lot weirder, because basically it seems that NVIDIA will launch almost Blackwell as two high-end launches. Now, that may sound confusing, so here we go. So, in short, GB202 seems likely to launch late next year. That's Q4 2024, potentially slipping to Q1 2025. But NVIDIA are concerned they will not be faster than RDNA 5's flagship, which, roughly speaking, is going to launch 9 to 12 months after that. Now, NVIDIA will probably be faster in ray tracing by a good chunk, but raster performance, they're probably going to be slower. This is, again, simply because NVIDIA just put more die space towards ray tracing stuff, and they do think it's the future. So, what is NVIDIA to do? Are they just going to say, ah, well, you know what, we're just going to be slower, that's fine. <laughs> of course not, it's NVIDIA. And what I'm hearing is that there are two options being considered. One is a safer bet, and one is a, I don't even want to know how much this is going to cost bet. So we'll talk about the safer one first, which is GB201. This is a monolithic die that will offer an increased number of SMs over GB202. I do not know how many SMs it has. It's designed, however, to take the performance from RDNA 5, so it's possible that they simply have not decided yet how many SMs it will require to do that. Now, there are some obvious questions that we're left with. What is the power consumption figures for this damn thing? What about the die size? Because you can't just have a chip which is like, you know, 900 square millimeters or whatever. There, there is limits on this stuff. And this brings us to the second option, which is an MCM design, which is GB200. Now, this I'm hearing is very experimental. And it's going to be very difficult to get working in a gaming sense. Now, remember, there's MCM versions of Blackwell already being rumoured for HPC and stuff like that. And AMD allegedly are doing this for RDNA 5 flagships. And originally it was scheduled for RDNA 4, but they had to put it back, as just about everyone knows at this point. Now, it seems that the information that I heard, they're using GB202 as the basis my assumption is, because this would lead to like 384 SMs total, my assumption, and I stress the word assumption, is that not all of those would be enabled. For example, we could have like, you know, low 300s or 320-ish or 330 or 340-ish SMs. That's just an example. Now, NVIDIA have done, you know, type 2X GPUs before, for example, the GTX 9800 GX2, and it's certainly not the only one, but that is not an MCM. They did it to hold performance t uh, crowns and stuff like that, and AMD have done much the same, but in that case, for example, with the 9800 GX2, and there are more modern examples, but we'll just pick on this one, it essentially was just running an SLI. So what happened is you had two GPU cores, you had a lot of uh, RAM, all the other crap, which basically goes to making a GPU, and then you had the PCIe bus basically bifurcated across the two GPUs. I am simplifying things here, but that's essentially what they did. Now, at the time, that was impressive from an engineering perspective, but SLI, of course, basically was doing all of that in, well, software. So games, of course, needed to, well, basically handle the crap themselves. 
That is not the same thing as most of you know as an MCM. That is much more complicated. And there's a reason that AMD had to delay their flagship RDNA 4 cards. Um, you've got things like, well, actually feeding the GPUs, data coherency, actually splitting the work across them and scheduling them, actually cooling and powering them. There's just so much that actually goes into making that work. It's even more complicated than data center. There's a reason that we've got like MI300 and AMD haven't done the same thing essentially for a gaming GPU. There are some other differences, but just in simple terms. Now, I would say that it's much more likely at this point that we're going to get a larger monolithic die that's going to have, let's say, 256 SM. But again, I don't know 100%. I also want to mention to you guys some other changes I've heard about the architecture, general stuff about Blackwell. Let's begin. So L1 and L0 caches seem to be fully unified. There also seems to be some type of new bus such IntraConnect. Now this seems to go across the entire GPU and it seems to hook directly into the L2. I was told that design is a little bit reminiscent of um, M3 from Apple. I have some conflicting information here when it comes to the CUDA cores. Now it's possible because one source told me it was design dependent, so it possibly changes for let's say data center versus gaming. But um, I was told 256 cores per SM, but it was design dependent. And another source told me that there's dual issue and there's 128 CUDA cores um, and 256 dual issue. Again, I am not certain which is true. I'm not quite certain how they are calculating it. So I'm going to put that information here. I know that it slightly contradicts one another, but again, I don't know which is true. It's possible one is for HPC or one is for gaming, etc., etc., etc. Um, however, I am also told that there's two times compute performance over Lovelace if the, if the clock frequencies are equal. Almost said something naughty there. Uh, even lower end parts use GDDR7 allegedly. And there's actually a really good reason for this, and it's down to narrower bus whips. So the lower end SKUs can use and probably will use 96 and 64 bit bus. So this means six and nine gigabytes of RAM with 256 or 384 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, assuming they use 32 GBPS and 24 GB modules. There's also improved frame generation technology. I don't know how, but somehow there's a latency reduction versus what we have now. Again, I don't know how that works, so I'm not even gonna speculate. But uh, path tracing and ray tracing reconstruction, I think that's quite likely based on, well, just what NVIDIA are doing. I've heard a lot about this advanced denoising stuff for quite some time, and there's so much research in public eye, a lot of white papers, a lot of just demos that NVIDIA are putting out for the software stack, and that's also kind of a part of this as well. Some of it is, of course, hardware support, but also some of it is just the actual software and games developers, etc., 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 getting more to grips with the hardware and the software. Now, in my previous video, I stated that I was hearing the GB202 was up to 2x of 1490, but at that point, I said, well, I think that's probably for ray tracing and path tracing. I think this is most likely true, but I've just heard so much information regarding the raster performance at this stage. I do think that it's substantially higher than a 1490, but I honestly just wouldn't put my money on anything specific at this point. I feel that it's just too early to know. Also, as a bit of a bonus, I, I may as well just throw it in here. RTX 40 Super Refresh is not happening for laptops, at least according to the current plans. Now, what did initially uh, happen is that it was on the cards, ha ha ha, GPU joke, but it's since been cancelled, so it's only now for the desktops. So that means, of course, that um, early next year we're going to see cards like the RTX 4080 Super. Now, there were some reports that um, NVIDIA were essentially telling AIBs that supply would start drying up for specific cards. But at least from what I'm hearing, AIBs were not given the reason. So they weren't told that there's going to be a refresh. They were basically just told, yeah, um, cards like the 4080 are going to be, well, basically just much harder to get hold of in the inventory, you know, because obviously NVIDIA are the ones that give 
um, MSI or uh, ASUS or whomever the actual stuff to make the GPU. Obviously, the AIBs do things like create custom cooler designs, etc., 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 but they don't, you know, manufacture their own GPU cores or whatever. NVIDIA basically provide them a bunch of stuff that then the AIB can use as kind of a basis and along with obviously the designs. So it basically happened, at least again to my knowledge, um, that first of all, NVIDIA told them, yes, the uh, super design, sorry, the, the, the um, supply is going to start to dry up. Then AIBs were hearing the rumours of the supercards, but they did not get told specifics. They only had the rumours, uh, like everyone else, and then, obviously, they were finally briefed as to the specifications. So, uh, yeah. I think many of you are already kind of writing in the comments at this point, well, that sounds all great, but what about the pricing? And honestly, with any flagship GPU launch, that's going to be really the crux of it. It's going to be absolutely interesting to see what the price point is. I'm already hearing that the flagship based on GB202 is probably projected to be about 2000 bucks, And quite frankly, I don't even want to imagine what an MCM card would cost. I mean, it's very... I mean, let's just be honest, it's going to be way outside of affordability for most people. But... Even a more modest offering for Blackwell or RDNA 5 when it launches is probably going to be absolutely sufficient to push high frame rates. And yeah, I do know that a lot of folks aren't so interested in stuff like DLSS and stuff like that, but ultimately frame generation, image reconstruction, ray tracing reconstruction and so on, they're just going to become more and more critical as we go forward. Um, and PlayStation 6 and next generation Xbox as well. All of this stuff is really going to be leveraging that. Um, I will also be very interested because, of course, we know the bike, well, you know, is going to be pushing stuff like path tracing. It's going to be very, very curious to me exactly what the next generation consoles from Sony and Microsoft are actually capable of. Because you can say that, you know, one of the, one of the, the, the oldest sayings in tech is that the convoy will only sail as fast as the slowest ship. So, you can have as many hardware features as you like, but ultimately developers need to adopt them, as you guys know. Um, so, of course, the PlayStation 5, as well as the Xbox Series X, they can run ray tracing, but it's nowhere near as performant as like a high-end 7900 XTX or an RTX 4080 or 4090 or something like that. So it's going to be very interesting to see exactly what happens. I will also be very curious to see from the midpoint what happens with the PlayStation 5 Pro. As I've discussed quite a bit, it seems that Sony are working on ray, uh, ray tracing reconstruction. I managed to get that out eventually of their own. Um, but yeah, from what I'm hearing, the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to be better in ray tracing, but it's certainly not going to be, you know, path tracing capable. So. I guess we'll wait and see. With that said, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Stay safe. Bye for now.